Hello, and welcome to another incredible sail-proof car review. Sitting right behind me is a 1966 Chevrolet Chevelle SS396 convertible for speed. It is a beautifully restored and preserved numbers matching muscle car icon. I don't know about you, but I think this car is absolutely gorgeous. And today we're going to learn about the Chevelle SS and we're going to determine if it's a good investment or if it's sale proof. First, we're going to cover a little bit of history on the Chevy Chevelle. The Chevy Chevelle, which is also known as the A-Body platform, is a platform that Chevrolet produced and sold from model years 1964 until 1977, and it's one of the most successful platforms that Chevrolet ever sold. It was available in various body styles. It was available in a coupe, in a sedan, in a station wagon, as well as the very sexy convertible. The SS or Supersport trim was actually sold on several Chevrolet vehicles throughout its history, and the Chevelle SS is especially special, and it was actually incredibly successful sales-wise. In 1964 alone, Chevrolet sold 294,000 Chevelles, 77,000 of which were the Supersport model. In 1965, however, the Supersport was offered with a special Z16 package, which featured a 396 cubic inch big block engine. In fact, from 1966 on, the Chevy Chevelle SS396 specifically became its own trim level throughout the model lineup. And that's actually the same body style right here, a 1966. The Chevy Chevelle and the subsequent SS were both redesigned again in 1968, and this redesign brought even more ridiculous styling and even more ridiculous powertrain options. However, we're not going to go over that in this video, we'll go over that in a future video, hopefully. Although I am curious to know your opinion, what is your favorite model year of Chevy Chevelle? Please feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section right here. Anyway, let's fast forward to 1973, and in 1973, there was a very large world-scale event that unfortunately doomed the fate of the SS line, and that was the U.S. oil crisis. I've talked about this in previous videos, but just in a nutshell, there was a really significant shortage of petroleum products in the United States, gas prices went through the roof, and ultimately, car buyers started focusing more on fuel efficiency and other aspects of vehicles as opposed to their performance. Now for the 1973 model year, the Chevy Chevelle in general was redesigned and there was an SS option that was available in 1973, but sadly it wasn't nearly as successful as previous years. So sadly, after the 1973 model year, the Chevy Chevelle SS was dropped. However, the Chevy Chevelle in general went on to sell until 1977. So this 1966 Chevelle SS396 behind me right here is an absolutely stunning example of kind of the heyday or the glory days of the muscle car era. And now we're going to show you a little bit around it and some of its oddities. So to start off the walk around of the Chevy Chevelle, we're actually going to start in the back and I wanted to show you the trunk. Now keep in mind, this is a convertible car and just look at how big this trunk is. Now, I don't have the exact dimensions for the amount of space on the inside of the trunk, so if you do know, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. However, it is quite sizable. I'd even argue that it's probably more sizable than some of your cars that you purchased today. So, convertibles are actually pretty practical. Next on our walk around of the Chevelle SS, I wanted to point out this really interesting aesthetic feature, which is right here on the tire. You'll notice this red circle that goes all the way around. This feature is actually called a redline tire, and this was available in 1966 and 1967 on SS model Chevelles like this one, or the Chevy Corvette. And I think this redline tire looks really, really awesome and really sporty with this particular wheel design. Now, this specific wheel design, it should be noted, is not specific to the 1966 model year car, although it is period correct for the time the car was built. Now we're moving on to the front of the Chevelle SS 396, and I wanted to talk about two features up here. The first feature I wanted to talk about are these amazing looking hood scoops. Now these hood scoops are only available on the SS model as opposed to the base Chevelle, which does not have them. And it's a really aggressive and really cool look. And what's really interesting is they actually go out sideways as opposed to out front. So it's more interesting than I think some other vehicles that do have really noticeable hood scoops. However, there's some sad news. They're not functional. And the second feature that I wanted to talk about at the front of the Chevelle SS is actually this badge that's at the front of the fender right here. Now you'll notice that there's badges all around the cars. There's ones that say Super Sport. There's one right in the front that says SS396. But this one looks oddly familiar. It looks very similar to the one that's on the Chevy Corvette, even on today's Corvettes. However, it's not exactly identical to the Corvette's badge. 
Now, if you know what the difference is, leave a comment in my comment section below. And while we're still in the front of the Chevy Chevelle SS396, there's actually an oddity that I noticed, which is really important to go over because it leads to the main reason why someone would buy a Chevelle SS396. And that oddity is actually the hood release, which instead of being located in the driver's seat in the wheel well, it's actually located right here underneath the SS badge. You just pull it like so, and then you can lift up and see the main reason why someone would buy a Chevelle SS396, and that's the 396 motor right here. Here you can see the 396 cubic inch big block engine in all of its glory. So earlier in the video, I was mentioning that this is a numbers matching vehicle, and I wanted to explain why that has significance and why that increases this car's value so much. So whenever a vehicle gets older, typically parts will start to fail or they'll start to die, and one of those parts is the engine. Now, the engine in this particular car was its selling point because it's a 360 horsepower monster, which was huge for 1966. However, if the engine dies, oftentimes owners will take the old engine out and they'll fit a new engine into the vehicle because it's easier to maintain or it's easier to find parts or what have you, or it's cheaper. You know, there's any number of reasons for that. So this particular car has the original engine and the serial number on the engine matches the VIN on the car. So if those two match, then that significantly increases the value of the car as well as the fun factor of the car. Now we're moving on to the interior of the Chevelle SS396, and it's actually a really nice quality interior, especially for the time period. Uh, the seats and the siding is made out of vinyl, um, but there's really nice stitching, there's nice piping, that is a really nice accent, and there's a lot of chrome throughout the interior, which is very appropriate for the time period, but actually has a very upscale feel to it, so I can perfectly understand why this car was so successful when it was brand new. The instrument cluster is very easy to read. There's a couple of controls that are very well labeled and very easy to use. So it's a very user-friendly vehicle. However, there are still a couple of oddities that I would like to point out. The first oddity that I wanted to point out is actually an option that was available on the Chevelle Super Sports, and that would be the tachometer. You can see that the tachometer is very separate from the rest of the instrument cluster, and it's often referred to as the knee-knocking tachometer because your knees knock it as you drive, especially quite spiritedly. And then the other interior oddity that I wanted to go over are the roll-up windows, but not the ones that are in the front. I'm talking about the little baby roll-up windows that are in the back. You can see in the back seat, which this is a convertible with four seats, so again, it's practical, but you can notice that there are these two little roll-up windows uh, that you can roll up the little baby windows to be sure that your car is completely enclosed if you were, say, driving this vehicle in the winter. But beyond those oddities in the interior, I couldn't really find too many others, and if you saw some oddities throughout this video that I missed, please feel free to leave a comment in my comment section below. So there you have it. That's a walk around of a 1966 Chevy Chevelle SS396 convertible. However, there's still a lingering question, which is, is this car a good investment or is it sale proof? First, we're gonna judge the 1966 Chevelle SS on its awareness. And I took a look to Google Trends to see how many people were searching for this car relative to other ones that I've previously reviewed. And it's got a pretty strong following. So it's gonna earn a six out of 10 in this category. Next, we're gonna judge the Chevelle SS on its appearance, and it's an absolutely gorgeous car, although it's not everybody's cup of tea, and it is very specific to the time period, so it'll earn a seven out of 10 in this category. Next, we're gonna judge the Chevelle SS on its appeal, and this is a very highly appealing car. Now, there are a few mainstream people that the car may not be appealing for because it only has two doors or because upkeep may be a little bit more expensive, but any enthusiast that you ask absolutely loves this thing. It earns a seven out of 10. Finally, we're gonna judge the Chevelle SS on its attainability, and surprisingly, Chevy actually sold a lot of these when they were brand new, and there's quite a few examples that are restored or actually beautifully preserved, so there's quite a few of them that are available. The only thing that's really knocking its score is that its pricing is starting to creep up, so when this vehicle was last appraised, it was worth approximately $52,000. That was almost five years ago. Now you can see them selling for anywhere from fifty dollars to $80,000, depending on the specific condition and whether it's a numbers matching car or not, so in this category, it's going to earn a four out of 10. So let's tally up the total score, and it comes to 24 out of 40, which actually makes the Chevelle SS a really solid investment still. So although the prices are creeping up and that's really the only thing that's knocking against the car significantly, it's still a solid investment. And if you have the means to do so, I'd recommend purchasing one. And even if you don't purchase it for investment's sake, it's a lot of fun.